Do do do. Do do do. Okay, we are starting a stream. I'm just setting up various things. You're looking at my YouTube page. That's wrong. That's what you'll look at. You just check. Yeah, there I am. Hello. Don't need to see that either. Ooh. Yep. Okay. So I'm streaming. I'm just sending links to places, and I'll introduce this properly. So I'm going to send it to Facebook. Boop. It's sent to Facebook. Uh, I'm going to send one very similar to the main Gardo community. Gardo community. That one. Gardo engine. Just doing a little impromptu work on uh, the prototype for our Kickstarter and figured some of you might want to watch. You can find the video on my YouTube channel. Ah, too much stuff. All the stuffs. Bibbidi bibbidi bibbidi. Uh, this isn't very interesting for you, but I'm just putting it on my laptop because I only have the one monitor on my desktop. Okay. Now let's get my chat open. Okay, cool. So there's no one in there just yet, but I figure there will be soon. And let me double check that's gone everywhere correctly. Boop. Boop. Okay, so hopefully that link I've just given everybody will actually show us live. We're going to find out in a moment. Ah, here we go. That's what I should have done. A little bit of stuff. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Hi, folks. Uh, Jan here, and uh, I'm going to be working on Godot Getaway, which hopefully you can see right here. I can't actually see what you're looking at right now. Uh, well, I mean, I kind of can if I look over to my laptop, get my chat open. Uh, hi, Jack. <laughs> All right, so uh, I've done a little bit of work on the interface right now, and we're getting to the point where I need to polish this, right? If you're going to have the interface, you can't, um, how can I put this? You can't half ass it. You have to use your whole ass. That is a terrible metaphor. Uh, let me show you what we've got at the moment. So I've changed the actual um, login. Uh, let me ch check this actual sound. There is sound. Awesome. Um, so that now we've got these drop down menus. So we can go here. I want to be a cop and I want to go nighttime. And if I host it, um, that icon needs to change, but I'll change that later. We can get into the game. And that should be nice and quiet. Let me just make sure the music volume is low. Good. So I've found that I can use these pop up menus, and that's great. But frankly, this isn't good enough. So I want to make that menu a bit better. And I need to make those changes stick. So that's what I want to be working on right now. I've got a basic plan. Um, that's my basic plan. I want to separate video, audio, and the quit button. Maybe put some decorations, although that can wait a little while. Um, and yeah, probably fix some bugs along the way too. I've been trying to slowly shift away from these placeholder assets to ones that we can actually distribute, right? I can use these for personal projects, but I can't distribute them. I don't have those rights. So. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. And the first thing I need to do is get into the right scene. So I've got my favorites right here. And in world, I've got a link to in-game menu, which is what I'm going to be changing. It's a pop-up. So it hides by default. And then you, in code, it'll open up. And frankly, this just doesn't do it for me. Now, when I start moving things, the signal's going to break and the code's going to break. But that's fine. We'll, one step at a time. So, Gotta Guess Away is the name of the game. I guess I like that. Uh, it's semi-transparent. Uh, how are you, by the way, Jack? Assuming you can hear me. Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. Uh, let me just check that various things has happened. Boop. You know what? I'm going to update these links real quick. Uh, give me one second, and then I will do this properly. Edit. Uh, there you are. Edit. Boom. Cool. And on this one as well. I'm not sure if people can actually see it if they want to. Boom. All right. So uh, doing this kind of thing live is always a little bit stressful uh, because I make a lot of mistakes when coding. I, I, 
do typos and forget basic things. Hey Kyle, how you doing? Um, but we're gonna give it a shot. So uh, let's see. First thing I want to do is tidy this pop-up menu up. This is bad. So I want to give it a brand new video. I'm gonna duplicate that. And you're gonna be called audio button. And we need to break these signals. Doop. Uh, no, I need to break these signals one more time. Okay. Now, you're not called audio options. You are called, I mean, not video options. You are called audio options. Cool. Uh, full screen, you don't live there anymore. So, let me check this, the script for that. Uh, where are you? Who we got here? We've got Mall Ninja Max. Uh, less than ten dollars. We are four pounds from being fifty percent funded. We're gonna get there any minute. Hi, Michael. Uh, so okay, I've got my laptop over here. You guys are over here. Um, I would have put my laptop over there where there's more space, but Iscat was asleep. Um, now he's asleep on the green screen, which is behind me. I've got the green screen down because I mostly use that when I'm teaching my English classes to kids in China. Okay, so what am I doing? I am checking how I've set up these signals before I break them. So right now, this check button is for full screen. That's going to have to move. Um, it's also a terrible name. Check button toggled. Is that it? Yes. All right, so let's do that because I'm going to find that in a minute. Great. And let's start breaking stuff. Uh, 2D mode. And we are just going to, um, yeah, get rid of that completely. Bye. Okay, cool. Now, these, these are going to be pop-up menus, right? So I need to rename you pop-up menu. Uh, let's rename you video menu. I'm just going to break the script again, but that brings this up. Now, currently, I'm stuck with the default Godo theming. I don't really know how to change that yet. I'm still figuring it out. Um, but yeah, let's give that a shot. So I'm going to um, wonder what that was on my phone. That's an email. I'm going to move that reference, right? I just renamed you. So instead of pop-up menu, you are now called video menu. Nailed it. Oh, thanks for the sub. Um, like, why it's telling me here that you subbed to me? Whatever, it's fine. Okay, so now when I press the video button, that should now open. Except that says on test button pressed, that's a terrible name. Let's break you. And... Is that right? No, nope, I just did the wrong thing. Okay. That one. Okay, you are getting disconnected and reconnected so you can have a better name. Cool. All right, so you're now not called test button thingy me. Meow. Oh, what the? No, 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 no. What is that? Mm. Yes. It lives down here. And now we can destroy that. Awesome. And let's duplicate you for the moment and call you audio menu. And wonder why my phone's making so many noises so many noises and at the moment that's going to look the same as the other one don't want it to but that's fine for now and we need to change the signal don't we so disconnect and reconnect on audio menu pressed audio menu dot pop up centered and i don't need any parameters the default's just fine i'm not currently using the id but that's okay um, I have done something slightly sneaky. I want to show you this real quick. Tangent, sorry, we're tangenting. Okay, so before this was a radio button and it just looked a little ugly. So what I've done is I've changed it for a uh, option button. An option button allows you to add a whole bunch of different items in. I could put icons in if I wanted, but currently I'm not. Why this is interesting is each one has a zero and a one. Well, I say zero and a one, it just, you know, adds a new integer with each one. So I can add as many options as I want, but the first one is zero and the second one is one. This is a little bit hacky. It might be a slight code smell, but I really like it. So for now, I'm keeping it till someone complains. If you check the teammate, the team change, right? So there's a variable called is cop. And there's an ID that's either going to be a zero or a one. Zero or one is also 
false and true in Boolean. So when this option is changed, when you change the option, it'll take the ID you've just selected and set the iscop variable to either zero or one, true or false. As long as I've got those options set the same way, it'll work fine. A little bit hacky, really satisfying. Done the same thing with Knight here. Couldn't do exactly the same thing with checking if you're the host or not, because we're also changing what's displayed. We're using a group call to change how these icons are displayed. You'll see here, everything is shown uh, in the editor, but when I actually start the game, I can't see all the options. If I change the host, it's sending a group call, and everything that's marked as host only will show for host, anything that's marked for uh, client only won't, and the button will rename itself. Um, while we're here, why don't we take a look at the changes I've just done. So, uh, I've got a new camera in. It's making everyone feel very sick. Um, but, you know, if you want the Vomitorium camera, here's the Vomitorium camera. We can almost drive on it. I've also massively changed the response of the car. Uh, that might be a bit much. Uh, is this showing with a decent frame rate? Because on my computer it's not. But uh, this is running at 60 frames a second here. Okay, audio options, nothing happens. Video options, something happens. Reflections are still working, depth of field is working, fog is working. Currently those won't stick, I have to put them in each time. Okay, so those are working, audio isn't. Let's take a look at why. Uh, first off, it's not connected. That's a really good reason. So, uh, button pressed. Slight lag you're in. Okay, so when I was watching the preview, it was showing at about 10 frames per second for the gameplay, which I just want to make very sure is not how it looks. And I need to make sure that when we record the gameplay, it actually shows at 60 frames a second, because otherwise no one's going to believe me. Uh, okay. Oh, that's interesting. What did I do there? Oh, I see what I did. Well, that's not what I want at all. Okay, fine. Um, that should be hide. That should be... Okay, cool. See? Told you. I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, Pop-up centered. Bibbidi-bobbidi-boo. Awesome. One more time with feeling. Host game. Let's change color. What do you guys, what do you guys think? How about... Um, Yellow? I feel like being a New York cab. Let's be a bright yellow. Audio options? Clearly not audio options, but that's fine. Video options? Cool. Change to real time reflections. Attempt to call function hide on base null instance. Ah, there it is. Okay, so that is a problem. So, this code is very much prototype code. You're not going to see a lot of what we see here, um, and I'll show you why. If I go to, for instance, our map maker, uh, well, first off, there's a navigation script. That's my navigation script. Clearly, that's just zombie code. We were briefly looking at trying to get nav meshes working with procedure generated grid maps, and it's buggy. Um, we are actually right at the edge of what Godot can do, and the problem is baking navigation meshes is one thing, but baking them after you've changed it is something it doesn't like doing. So currently that's bugged. Uh, so there is a bunch of zombie code, um, stuff that has been taken out and has, has been forgotten about. So I'm going to have to go through it all and do all that work. So where was I? I was doing a thing. I was, oh, um, if you've not taken one of my courses before, this isn't my normal teaching thing. I'm just working and talking aloud. Like I say, slightly weird. Uh, normally when I'm doing this in front of a classroom, I get feedback by looking at people's faces. I can't see you. It's weird. Uh, I'm also going to take a quick peek at the Kickstarter. Kick. No, that's Kick Tracker. Oh, yay. Kickstarter. Wah, wah, wah. It's a starter. Yep, still six pounds short. That's okay. I'm sure we're going to get that pretty soon. Uh, okay, so you are that, which means you shouldn't exist, which means we'll close you. Instead, on pop-up menu ID press. Well, that's clearly the bad name. I'm going to recreate you. And let's just do that. 
Okay, so what's happening here? Um, it's another option menu, uh, and when you press the ID, just match the ID. If it's two, if it's three, if it's four, if it's six. What's happening to zero, one, and five? Well, those aren't actually options you can select. So zero is just some text that says video options, right? It's just a title. Um, one is a separator, so it's just a line. In fact, I could just show it to you, couldn't I? Um, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that means zero, one, and five aren't actually options. I don't want anything to happen if the player touches them. Um, I really don't like this default Godot background, but I haven't figured out how to get rid of that yet, but I will. Cool. Um, and I guess that means I need to do something similar for audio menu, but for now we'll leave it. Okay, so get rid of you, you are zombies. What's in your head, zombie? Uh, 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 doo -doo -doo, looking at stuff, don't mind me. Seven people, hello seven people. Um, I'm sort of back and forth over everything, so I should probably let Mikey, if he's around, answer questions. If there are any, do you guys have questions, concerns, thoughts? Oh, you know what? Um, we are very close to officially announcing our next stretch goal. Um, I actually don't have the figures in front of me and I don't want to pull them up here um, because I don't really feel like showing you guys our financial documents. Um, we don't have any financial documents, but you know, when we get $10 billion pounds, I might buy myself a castle. We're not gonna get $10 billion pounds. Um, what was I talking about? Right, stretch goals. Um, the first stretch goal is almost certainly going to be a repository where people can upload the assets they've made. Um, other people can see the previews or possibly the 3D model. I know that you can upload GLTF models into Facebook and see them in 3D. So I'm wondering if you can do the same on other websites. And I guess you must be able to. You need to research that. Um, see them, comment on them, download them, use them in your own games. So we want to encourage that sense of community. Uh, 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 B. Okay, so you should now work. You should now work. All right, let's start designing. First off, this video menu. Um, I also need a full screen. So let's add some more items. Now this is the problem with using these IDs to do stuff, right? Because now Done is marked as six, but done is going to have to be something else. So let's call you full screen. And you are a checkbox, that's fine. Okay. And now we're going to add, I don't know why I closed that, I just left it open. Um, item seven gets no name and has a separator, it's already updated. And item eight is done. So. What I need to remember is seven is full screen, eight is done. Uh, you don't get the icon. Uh, you are a checkbox. Are you ready? That's radio button, not checkbox. Thank you. Uh, 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 no, you're fine. I need full screen is a radio button. I want it to have a little icon so you can see that you want to press it. Cool. Okay, so. Uh, six is now full screen, and eight is now done. Easy enough. Let's get to the match, and I'm just going to replace the six with an eight. Okay, so if the idea is six, um, Wait, what? No, what's, what am I doing? Let's just get rid of that function entirely. I was gonna make a new function, but you know what? It doesn't have to be. Um, uh, the window full screen does not equal, <laughs> equals not OS dot, this is a silly way of doing it, but I'm gonna do it this way for now. Uh, why is it silly? Because I'm not saving this detail yet. And I, I'm going to have to go back and rewrite my JSON. And that means that the currently existing save files will need to be erased. So right now that just impacts me and Mikey. Um, 
You're a bit curious, why won't this course be part of the Game Dev TV license? That's an excellent question. It's mostly because it's a very different kind of scope to what Game Dev TV currently offers, right? Game Dev TV is currently very much focused on um, beginner content through to intermediate content. So the idea is we'll take a piece of software, a game engine, Blender, GIMP, something like that, and we'll do a lot of small projects and get you from absolute beginner, never coded, never modeled, never whatever it is, up to a solid intermediate stage. This is a much more narrow market, right? This is much more about, okay, so you're comfortable with this piece of software, or you've got a decent working knowledge, or you just think, you know what, I can catch up during the course. How do we make one big, massive thing? And we're tackling some pretty big things from high-level concept decisions and all the rest of it. So the idea is to see how this works out. Now, this doesn't mean that we're not talking to Game Dev TV about it and stuff like that. It's more to do with... Right now, it's a very different model. Game Dev TV may well end up moving into intermediate content, and you know we may well do other stuff with them after this and all the rest of it. But right now, this is a very different thing. I hope that fit, that answers that question. Um, I'm going to check if my full screen thing works. Uh, I don't want to be yellow. Um, you guys should tell me what color I want to be. I want to be a very boring gray. I want to be a gray cop. I'm going to host it. I'm going to do a city seed of. Na 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 bat yan. Nailed it. Oh, that's a horrible color. Wow. You know what? I bet it's not gonna be so bad if I put on reflections and full screen mode. Okay, now full screen mode will break it for you, so I'm gonna take it out of that because OBS doesn't like it when I go to full screen. So hopefully that's gonna come back in a second. Go back. Uh oh, you know what? Beep, beep. Let's see if that works. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I broke OBS. <laughs> okay, um, so not going to full screen again, but now we know it works. Cool. Uh, hopefully you guys are still here. Hi folks. Uh, let's see how we're doing. Um, do, 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 Cool. We are still live. Great, you can see me. Awesome. There's a... I've told it don't delay it. It's delaying it. That's fine. Okay, let's design the audio menu. Um, well, first off, it can't say audio options. Let's get rid of all of these things that we don't need. Uh, you are called. We have a separator. That's, oops, no, 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 no. Why would you do that? Thank you. Uh, you. Cool. So we don't have reflections in audio. We don't have depth of field. We don't have fog. That separator can go and that done can go. Awesome. Now really this should be sliders, shouldn't it? which means this is the wrong pop-up. Okay. Let's take a look and see if there's a better pop-up we can use. I mean, I guess I could just use a standard pop-up. Um, pop-up panel? No. I'm just gonna do a standard pop-up. Hi, Mikey. Uh, doo boo boo bee boo doo be doo Okay, so you are there. Let's give you a color rectangle. Well, let's just design you. In fact, you know what? Let's make you a brand new scene and just work on you separately. Save branches scene in GUI, uh, audio menu, boop. Nice, okay. Uh, first thing, let's give you a background color rectangle. That's American spelling. That's the wrong color. Higgledy, piggledy, piggledy. Awesome, and let's put you in the center and anchor you to the full rectangle. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to expand in both directions and I'll do shrink as well. If you resize the screen down while this is open, it should do stuff. Maybe. Cool. So let's just call that background. And you know what? Let's give it an alpha. Meow. Yeah, that's what I meant to do. Uh, all right. Uh, next thing we need. We need a box container. What are you doing over there? Why would you be there? Uh, 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, VBox container within which we're going to put an H slider and a label. And let's apply the theme. So I don't have to change the fonts. Uh, what do I call this? Mikey, what do I call the theme? Lobby. Thank you. Oopy booby be doo be doo. Doopy booby be doo be doo. No, 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 no. You live there and you are called audio options. Optinos. Options. Oof. You know that moment where a word just looks wrong? I'm having that moment. We're going to align you in the center. The align top is fine. Great. And I need another. Uh, can I actually put a label on you? Why can't I put a label on you? Whatever. Um, oh, I should have checked the volume settings. Well, I guess I can do that here. Um, mm, did I? No. Tell me I didn't delete that. I wouldn't have been that silly, would I? Huh, maybe I am. Oh, you know what? I bet it's in the world. This is a giant script that does giant things. Oopie doopie doo. Um, yep, there it is. Okay, that's actually wrong. That shouldn't work like that. I'm changing the entire audio bus, which means I can't change the volumes of the music and so on. Um, okay, first thing I do. Let's do that. Second thing I do is, yeah, you see, that's all wrong. I'm going to stop this being an editable child. Cool. I don't want to be using a signal. I'm going to use a group call. I know a lot of people think I should be using a signal for this, and that's fine. I'd like to use a group call because it means if, if for some reason something isn't in there, it's not actually going to crash the game. It's just going to say, oh, I've sent a function out to something that doesn't exist. Okay, audio menu. Uh, let's give you another label. Uh, you know what? You're going to be a different size font, are you? No, you're not. Um, boom. Kind of want a separator, but do I have a separator graphic I can use? Yes. Uh, texture rect. Doopy booby be doo be doo. No, you're not a child of that. You live here. Okay. And let's see. Normally I'd be listening to music with this, but I don't have the copyright, so um, you just have to listen to me sing. It's just how that is. Deco elements. Uh, you for now. <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 no. Thank you. Um, let's give you a minimum. Uh... Hey! Hello, Ben. Ben Anderson, everybody. Welcome back. Or oh, welcome to... Ooh, no, what am I doing? <gasps> this is wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> Minimum size. Uh, 64? No. 32. Okay, I can live with that. Music volume. Currently does a thing. Audio menu is going to need a script. Yes. Um, music slider. Why I'm doing this? Because later I'll be able to do things like sound effects and put them on their own slider. Currently, we don't have any sound effects. Well, we have one, uh, and that's not how you name nodes. Higgledy piggledy big. Okay, and you uh, value changed float value because I want to pass the actual value through. Cool. One more thing I should do is set what this can be. Uh, minimum of zero, maximum of a hundred. Step one. Fine. You'll do for now. Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Um, I'm just using a, a basic texture rect. Um, do, 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 do. All of this is placeholder, unfortunately, but it'll do for now. I also think this should be a, okay. You know what? I changed my mind. You I'm getting a better 
great. Uh, let's make this font slightly bigger. So custom font, I am using Fashion Victim, which is under uh, GUI. Yes, ha <laughs> ha No, 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 how long have you been doing this? Dynamic font, then you can add your font. <laughs> there we go, okay, uh, Fashion Victim. And we are gonna put you as, Sure, you'll do. Let's put in the filterings. Why aren't you... Did I not put the size flags in? Why would you not do that? Okay, so you're working. Full rect. You should be expanding. Yankee <laughs> Pella. <laughs> oh, you think he's joking. Um, we have actually talked about Yan and Mikey doing an acapella album as a, um, as a stretch goal. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, why did I break this? How did I break this? You're centered. Mm, that's a wrap. I can live with that. Uh, well, it goes like this. I'm a fire starter, a twisted fire starter. <laughs> By the way, I am available for children's parties. Um, how do you use Godot again? Right. No, no, I know what I'm doing. Um, I don't need to fill. No, I do need to fill it. I need to expand it. I need the background to expand, but it's not going to. So let's put you back. <sighs> Why? Yeah, control nodes are so buggy. <laughs> He's joining in. Five dollar pledge, don't tempt me. Um, we have actually, so Mikey and I will frequently a cappella, usually prodigy songs for some reason. I'm going sailing to outer space. Find another place. I'll take your brain to another dimension. Pay close attention. Ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. Um, new, 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 new. Do I really want to use minimum size for this? <sighs> I hate using minimum size. You should just grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. That doesn't do anything. What does Grow do? Does anyone know? I mean, uh, I know what Grow does. Fine. I mean, I hate it, but whatever. Uh, okay, so music volume is now linked to that. So, now what I want to do is get tree. Now, I love using group calls. I happen to know that Ben Anderson prefers to use signals. He's like, why would you use group calls? Here's why. I can now run this scene separately if I ever need to. If for some reason I break something, it won't crash the whole game, right? So it allows a lot more flexibility. It also means if later on I want to add, I don't know, some GUI element that also responds to this, it could just hook onto the signal. Um, uh, no, 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 call group. And what's my group called? Uh, 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 what group are you? Game state, he'll do. Dooby doo. Okay, and we are calling a function, and it is called music volume changed, and we are passing through the new value. Now, you'll notice I am actually saving that, so that will stick. Music volume changed needs to be a string, and I'm passing through the value. Cool. So that should work. However, I need to change my... Um, yeah, that's a terrible idea. If I pass through... <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pass through a value of 100 and I've just set the audio bus decibels to 100 times 25. Yeah, we're not doing that. Um, let's do it here. Okay. Um, uh, 
value equals value times negative one. Is that right? No, that's nonsense. What am I doing? I'm doing this backwards, aren't I? Okay, so let's get rid of you completely. What I'm trying to do is I want my minimum value to be minus 100 and my maximum value to be zero. That's what I'm trying to do. And that should look the same, right? So if I go to 2D view and unpop the pop-up, great, it looks the same. And we're starting at zero, which is max volume. Fantastic. Now, when I change this, I just need to change the value. Set boss value, and that's going to set a maximum of, of zero, minimum of 100. Okay, let's see if you work. One thing I've just realized is it'll no longer look right. Okay, so anything over 50 is a waste of time, but it works. So let's go back to audio menu, minus 50. Cool, and that should look a lot nicer as well. Post game, let's change color. Um, what color should we be? Yeah, Ant Hall was amazing. Um, I wanna be purple, I'm feeling jokery. Uh, and you gotta be a criminal for that. And it's gotta be nighttime because Gotham. I don't have the rights to Batman. Pink? Yeah, I should have gone with pink. Okay, so let's change my audio. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I meant to do that. That quit button doesn't work, but that's fine. I mean, it does, but the moment you... I'll fix that. Okay. So now... I need to get that save value. Uh, and that's gonna be on ready. So when this loads in, I want to set the sliders to the correct place. So what I need to do is go uh, music volume dot value equals, and then I need to grab this thing, don't I? Um, that. All right, I'll show you my save game script in a moment because that's a bit magical, right? Um, but I've got uh, a singleton, a uh, auto-loaded script called saved, within which there is a dictionary called save data, which has a value in it called music volume as a string. Why is it a string? Because it saves as JSON, and a JSON requires every key to be a string, because reasons. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, let's go pink. Shocking pink. Okay, audio options. Okay. Oh, really, Yan? Wait, do I have a quit in my audio menu? Well, no wonder I'm pressing the wrong button. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, okay, and we'll put in a button, so boop, and it's already themed, so it should look good. And we don't want you expanding. Yeah, I mean, Unity is an amazing engine, it really is, it can do incredible stuff. There, I mean, there's a lot of back and forth about which engine should I use, and different people have different things, but really the answer is the one that clicks with you, right? I mean, I get a lot of people saying that you can't do 3D in Godot. Um, I really hope you can, because I'm kind of, you know, doing it. Uh, that's the wrong one. Um, why aren't you in the center? Sorry. However, the fact is you can if you enjoy the engine enough to do the work, right? If, it doesn't feel like work if you do. If you don't, then why would you bother, right? If it don't, can't do what you want out of the box and you don't enjoy the engine, of course it's not going to do anything you want. That shouldn't say quit, that should say done. Yeah, I mean... I'm replying to Max, uh, more Ninja Max right now. 
Um, there's something for that, right? I mean, in some ways, this is the sunk cost fallacy, right? I've gotten to use this, so moving out ways is, is harder over time. But there's also the fact that it is familiar. It is something you know. Um, and it's it's hard to stop using something you enjoy for something that maybe you will. But I think it's worth it. It's worth a shot. Um, Kyle's relay game is amazing. I'm terrible at it. Partly I have trouble distinguishing, I'm playing on the desktop, so distinguishing between hurdles and people. Partly because my reflexes aren't good enough. But it's worth playing, I recommend it. Uh, button pressed, audio menu, stuff. Okay, uh, when you happen, hide. Yeah, it's a pop-up, it hides, that's what it does. Uh, thank you, you live here. One more time. Lime green. Ooh, I'm gonna regret that. And you know what? Let's be a cop. Lime green cop. Audio. Okay, so there's a bug. Um, moment the game starts, the audio bus is at 100. The moment it finishes, it drops down. So that clearly is not going to work. So what I need to do is do this in lobby. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna get this audio menu. And I want to set, no, not audio menu, it's in world, isn't it? Um, let's just copy these for now. And the moment the lobby starts, I'm going to do this. The audio value, uh, music level. Okay. So if I've done that right, you know what, let's... Um, that's ugly, isn't it? That's really ugly. I put the sound effects in there afterwards. Okay, so now set starting audio levels. Cool. So if I've done that right. Boop. Yes, you don't get deaf in the moment you play. Oh, that's quite a nice color. Uh, what do you like with the reflections? Honestly, there's not enough of a visual difference to justify using real-time reflections right now. Um, but it's a nice option to put in there. When I'm looking at the preview, it's running at five frames per second. I really hope you guys aren't seeing it at five, five frames per second. Oh, I'm gonna check how the Kickstarter is doing. We are six pounds short of 50% last time I looked. Uh, let's see, Kickstarter. If you like sporting Kickstarters and getting insane in the brain. Oh, six pounds short still. <laughs> it's that 50% mark, I tell you. Uh, what's this? Cool. Uh, with a Blender course, will we create all the assets? I think that's one for Mikey. Um, yes, so this Blender course is specifically using Blender to make assets for this game. Uh, it's, it's focused entirely on the indie pipeline with Godot, right? So it's very specific. Indie development of Blender assets into Godot, and we're making the assets for this game. Now, does that mean that if you don't take the Blender course or if the Godot course comes out earlier, you don't get any assets? No, we will provide you with assets you can use and the Blender course will give you the tools to make other things. With the first stretch goal, we're thinking of allowing you to easily share assets between each other. So in your particular game, you can find a really cool tune that someone's made and add it to the selection, a really cool car. And later on, we have some ideas of what we can do with um, advanced customization. Uh, we've just s figured out, yesterday was it? Um, that we can load decals onto the cars and add that as a layer of customization. That's gonna to have to be a stretch goal, 
because we're going to have to UV unwrap the mesh and then every single car that someone makes is going to have to have its own decal list. So they're going to have to make decals. Not a, not a quick thing. Um, Okay, so what was I doing? Uh, I was designing the audio menu. How's it looking? It's looking <sighs> wide is how it's looking. I don't like it. Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm, I'm liking the theme. I want to change these pictures, obviously. Uh, min size 280. Oh, now you shrink down. Wait, what? Oh, okay. You won't shrink further than that. Fine. I can live with that. Okay, so audio menus is pretty much done. Now, I need to take a quick look at my save script. The way I've written this, I can't change my save game. Okay, so let me walk you through this real quick. Uh, extends node, very basic node. It's just auto-loaded, doesn't exist on the node itself. There's an empty dictionary, must be a dictionary, and a constant save game, which goes to your user folder. Now, this is important because if I go to uh, project data folder, on Windows, this is in app data roaming, Godot, app user data, name of the project, which currently is Godot Cut Sandbox, obviously named this project before we came up with the name. And right here is a save game.json. I can open it up and you can see my values in it. However, what happens if you run the game and you don't have a file with these values? Well, what we can do is, if not file, file exists, save game. Take a look inside, uh, take a look for this folder. If it's not there, save data equals, and then we've put in a bunch of default values and then save it. So we've now created it, it now exists. Whether or not we've gone through this step, we're now gonna open it, read it, uh, get it as text and pass it as JSON. And now we've got this thing called data and we can return that data. So every time we say get data, that's gonna work. Um, then we're repeatedly going to be changing save game. So every time we want to change the player name, the local paint color um, or the music volume, we're going to immediately save the, the game. And if I show you the lobby script, uh, let's take a look. Um, the moment you change the customization color, it's going to say, okay, immediately save value local paint color to this color value passed as HTML. So lots of things going on. And the problem I've got here is I've just added a brand new thing, right? I've just added full screen, which I'm not gonna test again. And currently, if I add that to JSON, my existing save file won't have that. Now, at the moment, there are only two people who are running this, me and Mikey. And it's not too difficult for me to say, Mikey, I need you to delete your save file. And then he'll forget, and the game will crash, and then we'll get mad at each other. Um, it's not what happens. However, once the game goes live, that's much more of an issue. So I would have to do something like... Um, can you even check if a key exists in a dictionary? I actually don't know if you can. Uh, oh, I typed it right. Uh, do, 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 do. Use, oh, use has key. Well, why didn't I think of that? I'm a professional. Beep. Okay, so. Hesitating because I now have to. Um, uh, sorry, not most riveting TV. I'm gonna have to rewrite my save game. Okay, so there's a quote from um, Extra Credits. The later you make a, dis a change in your game, the more expensive that change is. This is true now, right? At the moment, save game isn't very big, but it is used in lots of places. What I should do 
is write a function that checks if the value exists whenever it's being read. So if I'm reading this function, so I need a function saying read save game or get save game data. And then I need to pass through the key that we're looking for. And then I need to say if the save game has the key. If not, create your default. Whew. Looking at your channel, I can see why your kart racing game suddenly became an online multiplayer cops and robbers game. Yeah, well, I played a lot of APB. I actually um, still get views on my APB tutorials. And I played a lot of Elite Dangerous and Star Wars Galaxies. Um, but yeah, eventually we'll have, well, I say eventually, we're in the process of registering our company. When we do that, we'll register a company YouTube channel and we'll rest it, probably. Uh, but this is fun. I just thought I'd hang out with you guys while I tried this. Okay, so this save game. Well, right now, let's just make a note, right? Um, let's make a note right here. No, no, no. Thank you. Was it has key? Oh, it just has. <laughs> nice. To check if the save game dictionary has a key, if it doesn't give it a default. Cool. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the lobby. Let's go down to the lobby. So I've been playing in GIMP and briefly in Inkspace to try and hand make deco elements. And deco elements aren't difficult to make in the sense of how they're designed. But I don't vector graphics and I don't really have the tools to make them good. So every time I did it, I got jaggies. So right now I'm using these placeholder ones. I don't have the rights to these. I can't give them to you. Um, I mean, I can, but no. What I could do is say, go and download assets from one of these places. But I don't know, it feels like I should be providing the assets Personally, that's just how I roll. Speaking of rolling, I want your opinion. This current camera. So to, ooh, I can add favorites. Oh, I can't, I'm not saving the favorites. Okay, I have to find a way of saving the favorites. Sorry, distracted. Uh, ooh, this nice teal color. Let's go over here. So originally the camera just followed the car around and what would happen is the camera would tilt with the car. So you turn around corners, there's very bouncy suspension on purpose and you tilt with the car. Mikey and I both really enjoy that. It gave us a sense of movement, but a lot of people got motion sickness or more accurately simulation sickness. And they were asking for different types of camera. So I've taken Bastian Olige's, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Bas, I'm sorry, um, follow camera from his tutorials and I've tweaked it a bit. And I think now what I've got is really vomit inducing, um, but you might enjoy it. So um, oh, it's a bug in my lobby. I need to figure this out at some point. So tell me, is this good or bad? Um, and if you have more than 10 frames per second. So what I've got is a follow camera that's actually following a point about 10 meters in front of the car. So that when you turn the corner, you can see around the corner. Ish. I mean, you can't really see around the corner. And honestly, if you look at the car instead of the road, you get seasick. Evil fire hydrant. So my question, better or worse? Bye fire hydrant. What do you think? Is it better to have a car following and maybe the option to tilt or not tilt with the car? Because when it doesn't tilt, the car feels really janky. Um, it felt like, in Mikey's word, like it was on jello. Other people prefer it. Way too chuggy for me to tell. Um, it ran smoother earlier. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if there's something I can do over here on YouTube. Let me take a look. Doobie booby ba dooby doo. Hi is cat. Uh you know what it's probably in OBS, isn't it? Mikey, it's too chuggy. This is is cat. Hi, buddy. His sister caboodles around somewhere. Wait, am I even... things? Give the player the choice. <laughs> yes, this cat, I know. 
I need to give you more attention. I think giving the player the choice is a nice idea. Um, choice with the camera? Like follow camera or not follow camera or just the wobbly camera? Um, uh, I'm using NVEC, Mikey. Here you go, buddy. Please don't stand on the laptop. Oh, you're such a perm machine. All right. Yeah. So my cats really miss my wife. And unfortunately, my wife is stuck in the States for the next few months at least. Or we sort out visas and things. So they're demanding more and more attention every day. Um, and helping me code. Let's see. Give the player the choice. One person might not like the same as the other. Yeah, I think choice is definitely good. There was one time you ran it a bit ages ago and it, it was silky smooth. Okay, you know what? Maybe don't put it full screen. Let's see how that works. So... Is it smoother if I do this? Is that smoother? I'll wait 20 seconds, because you have to see it, and then I have to see your response. Okay, so don't go full screen. So, part of me likes this because you can now see the car, right? It's not locked directly behind you, which means you can do fun, like, bootlegger turns. Part of me feels motion sick, and I don't get motion sick. Actually, I'm not feeling motion sick. It just feels blurry. If I don't look at the car, if I look at the road, it's much easier. Seeing around corners is tough, though. Let's just crash into some scaffolding. Much more like it. <laughs> I learned to drive in New Jersey. Okay, it looks smoother. You like the concept. So I like the concept, too. Looking around corners is tough, but this might not be too bad. Uh, these are placeholder textures, by the way. Um, Mikey didn't do these textures. I got bored and put textures in. <laughs> and Mikey went, oh, you've put textures on it. <laughs> Sorry, Mikey. I don't know how to use Blender. So I just downloaded some textures and just whacked them in. Um, also, these cars, really heavy. Now, the problem with this, of course, is that actual reversing is tough. I need to put in a button to make the camera look behind you. There's also some fun thing. I mean, I tried interpolated camera, but it's just a mess. Like, it's not designed to be following the car around. Um, burgers are tasty, eggs are for twerps. It's good to know. I also really like these billboards. So, oh, you know what? Let's show you how these billboards work. Uh, billboard. Scene. Okay. Uh, nope, wrong one. Entirely wrong. Billboard object. Uh, there's two things called billboards. That is the name of the player over the car. Need to give that a different name. Cool. So here is a very simple billboard that I've made with CSGs. Right? It's just a placeholder for now. And this texture here on the poster has a script on it. And the script says... Get files. So what it's going to do is it's going to look in this folder for all materials or anything in here, and there are all materials, and then apply one of them randomly. So it'll get them. It'll put all of them into an array. I think. Oh, it's actually a dictionary. It should be an array. Uh, pick one randomly, and then load them all up. So what I can then do is I can have a bunch of um, where they put them, a bunch of different very quickly made posters and you can just throw them in. So I've got a toucan over here. I can't believe it's not beta. I've got a Godo one. I've got a cool crimes one. And the nice thing is you can just add as many as you want. This means that when I was saying on Facebook, hey, do you guys have any idea um, what kind of rewards would be nice for you guys? What would you like to see? And a bunch of people were like, put my name on a poster in the game. It's like, yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Why would you pay for that? Uh, oh, you know what? I need to check something real quick. No, good. Okay, cool. Got sidetracked. Um, I'd like to know what's making people sick. So, I was actually watching a video on this earlier because I was trying to figure that out. There's actually very little evidence on what it is that causes simulation sickness. There's a few things that seem to help. One, turn the brightness on the monitor down and turn the brightness in the room down. Weirdly. 
Uh, don't be too close to the, to the thing. Move the camera further away from the car, but the further away I move the camera from the car, the harder to see around the corner. Um, these are the big ones. Uh, and some people are not prone to it. But yeah, you can make your own billboards. Um, where did I keep them? Textures. Here's all my textures. So there's my blender image, my burger. Most of these I just made in, I really like this one. I just made in, um, what do you call it? Gimp. But yeah, you can just make as many as you want. Um, this is the other downside, of course, of a repository that we're talking about for a Kickstarter. We're going to have to um, moderate it. Because while I find it highly unlikely that any one of you is going to put something inappropriate up there or porn or horrific Nazi imagery, I still have to check just in case somebody gets drunk and loses their mind one day. You know, it's a thing. Um, but yeah. I really liked these little billboards. I was so proud of myself when I made them. It's not like it's a difficult thing to make. Um, traffic cones are fun. Mikey Zeppelin. Let's take a look at Mikey Zeppelin, shall we? Mikey. Okay. So you see these little corners. That's a city block. <laughs> Actually, these things are border walls. Um, what I've got. I quite like them. I'm going to talk about the border walls real quick. I'm proud of these. Four CSG walls. N, S, E, W, and E, right? And what's going to happen at the beginning of the game, they're going to resize. This is called as a, a group function. So the world makes, the, the map is made. And when it's made, it's going to tell the border walls resize. If you're the network server, send a remote procedure call to make the border with the tile size. Why? Because the server settings might be different from the client settings. So only one person gets to check what they are. And then it's just gonna say, okay, you're a CSG wall, resize each wall to these parameters, change the width, and then tell them all to use collision. And this one is really sneaky. Turns out, although CSG walls can be told use collision, if you resize them at runtime, the collision doesn't change, which means you set the wall and then Mikey gets stuck in a box that he can't see. Okay, so yeah, Mikey Zeppelin. Here's Mikey Zeppelin. I say, okay, can you see the bit that I added? <laughs> I put the blinky lights in. Uh, so those are fun. A uh, couple of things I can show you. Let's take a look at the scaffolding. Again, placeholder uh, using, this time not CSGs, just basic meshes, right? Um, and all of these are set to sleep. That means the moment any physics object interacts with them, they'll wake up. And if they wake up, in fact, just pull one wakes up, but if they wake up, it's gonna send a quick signal. Has finished spawning. Am I using this? Okay, I've got a variable here called has finished spawning, why? Because I found out objects that are set to sleep that are intersecting with other objects wake up. And I'm procedurally generating the map and procedurally spawning things. So what would happen is that the objects would be placed, slightly touch the map somewhere, and every single one of them would go. However, I don't want them moving forever, so I've got a timer start. And when the timer starts, uh, let's actually open the scaffolding scene. Here we go. Where'd you go? No. Where's my timer? Timer? There it is, it's over here. A timer sends a signal. The signal on timeout. On timeout, add dissolver. Dissolver, this is a utility. This is a node I can load into any object. And what it does is it uses this little shader tree thing that I completely uh, borrowed from GD Quest does that effect, right? Um, I'm actually gonna get rid of that effect because it doesn't sync up properly. But then we got this script, uh, at least we would do. Where's the script? Oh, maybe if I don't open the texture. Okay. As it enters the tree, if you're a mesh in the parents' children. So go up one level, check all the children. 
every single mesh, if the mesh is a mesh instance, override the material with this dissolver. If that mesh has any meshes beneath it, do the same thing. And then the timer starts automatically. The moment it's done, everyone out. So it's a little plugin that I can load into an object that after 10 seconds deletes it and it changes the material. Brown idea. Could you use a standard mesh with a box collider on collision, spawn a Gib version and apply force? A Gib version? You mean like in Doom? What do you mean Gib version? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. But I'm interested. Um, this was going to be me working, but I'm just look. I'm just showing off stuff now. Or oh, let's say showing off. Um, do you guys want to see the proc gen? Let's look at the proc gen. <laughs> okay. Um, this is modified from Kids Can Code's incredible tutorials on um, procedural generation in tile maps in 2D. And I had to do a bit of tweaking and change it. Oh, you do mean Gibbs? Uh, yes, you could absolutely do that. However, the original design document that Mike and I have has no violence in the game. So we haven't got guns, we haven't got ragdoll, we haven't got pedestrians. But if you wanted to, yes, that is a thing you could do. Um, all right. Uh, print mesh library. Use this for the neighborhoods. Okay, so we were playing with the idea at some point of adding neighborhoods to the town. So this section has these buildings, this section has this. We might still do that, maybe as a stretch goal. We didn't think of that, Mikey. Mikey, write this down. Mikey. Okay. Um, if local player ID equals one, that's a variable I'm setting in network, and it just means if you are the host. Get the map settings. F pick the map seed. I'm probably gonna get rid of this erase function. Um, it's how many junctions do you want? Honestly, I never tweak this, but if you want it, we'll leave it in there. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I mean, you absolutely could do it that way. Um, I'm sorry, I'm... I'm Applying to um, More Ninja Max's thing, the idea of using Gibbs for shatterable crates and all the rest of it, you could simulate it in physics. What you'd have to do is make basically a jigsaw, right? And put them to sleep and then have them explode. Uh, that would work fine. But that's quite a lot of work on the physics engine. If you have, let's say, a pile of boxes and all of them have to do that, if you start syncing that across the network, you're going to create problems in the netcode because it turns out um, the way we're doing physics is the all car physics are being run on the server, which solves a lot of problems, but it means if the server's running physics, it will prioritize those, which means that none of the clients get anything. Um, assuming you don't want it to be perfectly synced with everybody, or they're all running them locally, that's doable. But at that point, it might become easier to either do as a shader or to do something clever in Blender as a pre-rendered animation. So you have a single object that's made up of this jigsaw thing, and then rather than simulate them accurately in physics, have an animation that you can play once, and at the end of the animation, it queue freeze. Uh, that would be the way I do it, just because it's less resource intensive. Uh, okay, so let's look through this. We're gonna make the map border, where we've looked at that, right? It's just um, go to the border, resize the border with the cell size. Okay, so what else we got? Um, make, where's my make blank? Make maze? Oh, here we go, make maze. Okay, so we need a stack and an unvisited. Just empty dictionaries we can add to. We're gonna create a blank map. Here comes the fun bit, ready? Create blank map. My maps are blank. Okay, for X in range, zero width. For Z in range, zero height. Why am I using X and Z? because I don't want to use Y because it's a 3D game. I'm not going that way. Shouldn't that should be called width and height. Um, I just realized. <laughs> width and breadth. I don't want to change height. Whatever. Possible rotations, 0, 10, 16, 22. These are very sensible numbers that have very sensible meaning. I don't know what they are, but they're very sensible. So grid maps allow you to rotate a tile, right? But allow you to rotate them in all three axes, which means you need to know the number of the specific rotation you want. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any pattern to them and you have to try them manually. So I did. So we have possible building rotations. 
I want you to pick one randomly from these four, then pick a building. We have a 1% chance of, of skyscrapers. This is a percentage. We have two tiles that we can use for buildings, 15 and 16. And then we're going to pick a, a random one and I need to automate building 17, which is a skyscraper, and then return the type of building I'm gonna add. Then we're just gonna place that building. Uh... Now, I, I, I like your, um, your physics question. It's, what, what's the essential experience, right? If you're moving at high speed and you wanna see things flying, that's one thing. If you're moving at high speed and you wanna see, see things shattering, that's something else. Shattering is completely doable. You just need to know that at the beginning. Don't do this at the end of the game because it's going to be a problem. Um, quick note about these 15s and 16s. I'm going to open the tile map. If I can remember what it's called. What's it called, Mikey? Uh, large road. Ha 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 ha! Found it. Okay. So. Uh, we actually have navigation meshes we're not using in here. Mikey, we need to get rid of the navigation meshes. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's do this with stylus. Where's my pen? Cat ate my pen. All right. Tutorial time. Boo doop, boo doop, boo boop. It works like this. Nope. Let's do this in a pen. All right, we have a tile, okay? And each tile is a certain size. In this case, it's 20 meters by 20 meters. And we're gonna assign binary values to these. So these are going to be, how does this work? Uh, two, four, eight, is that right? No. Two, one, two, four, eight, that's how it works. Not a math teacher. One, two, four, eight. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, this is just a building, right? But if I don't want it to be a building, let's say I want it a road over here. So I'm gonna erase the wall here. So if I erase the wall, then I need to tell it which wall I'm erasing. I'm using zero. And then it's just simple bitwise, right? So if I want this road and this road, that's three. If I want this road, this road, and this road, that's seven. If I want all four of them, that is 15. Right, so 15 is a big junction. Except anything after 15 becomes a variant for a building. So with that in mind, what we have is a bunch of different blender created tiles, right? It's just something we're gonna teach you how to do, uh, which currently have nav meshes which we're not using, which are getting in the way, but I'm just gonna hide one of them for now. So let's get rid of my nav mesh. Uh, you would have mesh? No. Where's the nav meshes? Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So here we have uh, number two, and it just has one wall on it, right? So I can add or subtract the walls. I think I've actually put them the wrong way around. We're adding the walls, we're not subtracting the walls. But the idea is we can then use a very simple thing to say, okay, tile number five can only be made with four and one. So we know those two walls need to be either added or subtracted, depending on how we're doing this. And then from there, we can just draw a path. I'm gonna draw a path using this um, erase building thing, erase walls. So we're gonna go through the whole thing, get the current cell by finding its um, location, coordinates, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna clamp it so that the current cell can never be higher than 15 because otherwise it's gonna go wrong, right? I'm gonna find the neighbor that, in the direction that I want so pick a random direction. If there's a neighbor there, I'm gonna erase it. And then I'm gonna add it to the stack and just have a the stack and an unvisited. And then when the, there's nothing left in the unvisited or there's no way of getting there, the map is complete. Then I'm gonna fill the gaps because I'm actually, I've got a spacing variable, right? So I'm not doing every single tile, I'm doing every second tile, which means I need to fill those gaps. So I need to find which way they're facing and put something in the middle. Uh, buildings, then I need to record the tile positions because we need to place objects on these tiles. They can only be on the roads and they have to be aligned properly. Ah! And then when it's all done, when you've created a map, send a signal to the player. If you're the network and the number of ready players is the same size as the number of players you have, tell everyone they can go. And then if we can go, everyone unpause the game. 
Oof, there's a lot going on here. Any questions? This will be on the test. I was a professor for a while. Although you should have seen my, um, what am I doing? No, 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 no. You should have seen my multiple choice quizzes. In fact, if you've taken the Godot course, and board game course, you have seen my multiple choice questions. There were things like, um, why were cities not allowed to be built within the walls of the city of, no, why were theatres not allowed to be built within the walls of the city of London during the Elizabethan period? And the answers were, um, because they all kept singing about how lovely it was to be a chimney sweep and no one got any work done. Uh, because Professor Burrett doesn't like it when I'm on the phone. Uh, they were. It was a Jedi mind trick. I got very bored making quizzes. Okay, so what else we got? Um, well, I was going to be working on the menu. It's kind of getting there. I mean, it, we're going to need some sound effects, right? You need some feedback when you're changing stuff. I think it's probably worth displaying the city seed. What do you think? You know what? I'm going to display the city seed. Let's do that. Oh, wait. You need to vanish. You don't exist. No, no, no. H. Snyder, go away. Whew. Okay. Uh, let's make you live down here. What was that? Oh. <laughs> Okay, fine. You can live down here. No! Why won't you... Hbox container. Wait, what? How do I... What am I... You should be here, right? Okay, I made it work. It's fine. Okay. Never mind. Everything's everything is copacetic. Label. Seed label. Cool. Uh, we're presenting you. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, uh, uh. Seed label text. Why aren't you working? Seed label text. Mm. Hello. Thank you. Autocomplete's not playing. Seed label dot text. Fine. You know what? That's just what you look like now. Um, in game, yeah, this is correct. Whatever. Equals. And now I need to grab this. So let's go to the network. Uh, nope, it's not in network, is it? Seed equals network world seed. Yes, that is actually being passed to everything. Cool. Okay, I did that correctly. Um, uh, seed equals plus, and I will need to cast this as a string, and it's going to be network dot world seed. Why is autocorrect not, autocomplete not working? Whatever. Let's see if it works. I'm a little teapot covered in jam. No. What do you mean it's not a string? It's right here. Oh, it. Ah. No, it's not. Fine. You know what? I'm just going to drag you. Uh, 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 boop. La la la. Eat that. Haha. <laughs> okay. That's what you get for autocomplete not working. Oh, wait. No, I need to put a seed in. I'm getting tired. You can tell. Seeds, please. What do you mean it's not working? I pressed insert, didn't I? Captain Typo! Typo man. Why 
Why? What do you mean you can't? Index value, a type of float. What are you talking about? What? You're working fine. What do I do? So, is this actually that? Because that looks different. No, okay, I've broken something else. You know what? I bet it was. Because I deleted that. Okay, that's what's happening. Um, audio menu. Okay, function, update, music, level. Okay, so what's happening is I had originally had the slider change depending on what the volume should be, but I've now moved it so it doesn't. So I need to change val, uh, nope, that can't be called value. Um, volume, there we go, value equals volume. Cool, let's add you to a group. Oh, right. Uh, which one is the slider? Let's get to the right scene. Music volume. Music volume dot value equals volume. Cool. Now, when are you getting loaded in? Right here. Okay. Get tree dot call group. Uh, GUI. And what do we call you? Oh, I've got too many of these open. Way too many things open. In-game menu. Uh, nope. It's the audio one, isn't it? Let's close you and you and you. This is what happens when I've been coding for too long. I have everything open. Okay, audio menu. Update music level with volume. Awesome. Let's get back to world. Mr. World. Awesome. And finally, I need to add the audio menu to that group. Okay, once more with feelings. You lie. What are you talking about? What did I do? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I didn't remove the line that was bugged. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Okay. Cool. Now you're working. I need to go back to the thing I was just trying to fix. If I can remember what that was. I can't remember what that was. Oh, I was displaying the seed, wasn't I? Okay. Seed, five, three, eight, one. I don't think that's true, but let's put a new seed. Banana. Minions is the greatest movie of all time. Okay, so it's giving you the numerical value of the seed, not the unconverted numerical value, but it is still working. So that is good enough for me. It means you could, if you wanted to, replay the banana level. Let's go this way. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Cool, okay. I think that's probably enough for now. So um, yeah, I'm going to switch scenes, which I have to do this way. Boop, okay, hi. Um, before we finish, any questions? 50%, what's this 50% business? 
Um, so yeah, I did a bunch of fiddling. I showed you guys some stuff. I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, I've just noticed I bought a giant chocolate bar. <laughs> um, I'll play with that later. Um, we're really excited. Oh, we're at 50%. That 50%. <laughs> we're at 50%. You people are awesome. I totally didn't clock what you guys meant. No idea what you were talking about. Um, that is absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, 50% in two and a half days? Oof, okay, so yeah, stretch goals. Um, we do actually have the figures, we'll have to record an announcement for this, um, but the first stretch goal is almost certainly gonna be this repository thing. We've got some ideas for some other stuff. If you guys have stretch goals you want to see, do let us know. One thing I'll point out, we're in an unusual situation. We have, th that was a weird American accent. Uh, we have three, uh, this is how my Chinese kids count. We have three, courses and the stretch goals should ideally be good for at least two of those courses, right? If I keep putting stuff that's great for Godot and someone hasn't taken the Godot course, that's not much of an incentive for them. But not all of them have to do that. Some possible way down the line things we're talking about are things like dynamic music. So if you're carrying money, maybe more instruments come in. If you're in a different neighborhood, if we have neighborhoods. Na Mikey, write down neighborhoods. Um, so yeah, that's an amazing thing. Um, any thoughts, questions, concerns, interpretive dances, poems that you guys want to share before I call it a night? I'll wait a few seconds. Yeah, dynamic music would be a lot of fun. We need to play with it a bit. Um, one of the things we do want to do before, or maybe before, maybe after, one of the things we do want to look at is um, upping the customization. Um, possibly eventually with modular car assets. Now we know how to do this, but it's quite a lot of extra work. It would be, I want this hood, these wheels, this thin, whatever, right? And then if we start adding decals on top of that, like that's quite a lot of production, not just for us, but for the students. So we wanna make sure that there's enough um, interest out there for that to happen. And I don't just mean financial interest. I mean like, if we're gonna add that much extra workload, not just to us, but to the videos, let's make sure that people actually want that. So let us know. Um, will there be a limit on the number of players? Yes, yes there will. Um, in fact, currently, um, let's just hide my, yeah, just hide my IP. Um, currently, number of players is not in the script, it's in the network. Uh, that's the wrong world seed. Max number of players. Yes. Okay, so here's why. This is a peer-to-peer -peer networking game, okay? So the host is having to do quite a lot of work. The host is having to calculate physics for all cars at the same time. And every frame we are transmitting the physics and position data of every car. The more we add, the slower that gets. It works great on two, um, unless you have too many shadows, in which case it stops working. We think it'll work great with four. If we wanted to have 64 players, one would need a much bigger city, um, which is doable. Two would have to change to a headless server, right? You'd have to have an online server. And at that point, we're looking at a very different type of game, right? This is a much more intimate player to player experience, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, Ben, definitely do more Godot videos. I love your Godot videos. Ben is actually, Ben Anderson. Hi, Ben Anderson, heart beast over there. Um, it's actually the first tutorials on Godot I ever followed. And then three months later, I started making a course. So that was you know, good teaching. Um, some things I'd like to do, but adding to this course would be questionable. Well, suggest them, because the worst that can happen is that we'll say, it might not fit here, but here's some ideas. And someone else might think that. Uh, another great example of this is uh, Azrael Studios. I think it's Azrael Studios. Um, I mean, he's been part of the Godot community for a while, all the rest of it. He was saying he's really looking forward to tweak, seeing if he can tweak this course so that he can make a steampunk game where the driving is just a section of it. Like that's a serious ambitious goal. At that point, you're talking about a full indie team, but that's really what we're thinking about. Um, metal fingers for Jack. Thank you, Jack. And uh, also a panda. Um, there is a reason why I have a whole bunch of finger puppets here. It's because I teach kids online at the same time. As you can probably tell. Oh, I have water. <laughs> I'm not a complete idiot. Goodness, I'm thirsty. Okay, 
Any other questions, thoughts, concerns, contents, things? Don't show these again. I don't know why it's asking things. Oh, I've, I should probably check Facebook and things. Uh, questions? Nope. Really basic, getting out of the car to rob a store, confront a criminal, would probably be violent though. Okay. Yes, it would be violent. It's also, you have to remember this started as a kart racing game. In fact, do you guys want to see, I'm asking, uh, Kyle has seen it, Mikey has seen it. There was a prototype that I worked on. I actually uploaded the uh, Git repository and Bass recorded a video of him and his son playing. It was awesome. Uh, let me show you this thing real quick. Uh, this is the castle near where I used to live. I don't live there anymore. Um, the moment we start adding things like NPC humanoids, we have to start adding navigation. And currently, navigation with a grid map that's procedurally generated in the way we've done it doesn't seem to work. It might do, but it's a bit beyond my Ken. It's actually a bit beyond my Barbie. Um, but I think it's just a bug. But here, simple split screen. Original thing that I made. And a lot of three, three, two, two just one, a grid. go. So this is where this game came. Right now, I don't know if you managed to see any of that. Uh, no, because I had the wrong thing. My goodness, I'm a genius. Okay, let's try that one more time. Picture in picture. No, nope, not gonna work. Okay, whatever. Uh, there was a cart game. Wow. Yeah, okay, so that was a complete fail. Um, let me talk you through it. There was a simple cart game. It looks very much like, kind of Lego, I guess. Very plasticky. Um, and then the refining and refining and adding more things finally meant, okay, this is not a car racing game. You could absolutely... Can you hear me, by the way? I hope you can hear me. Booby doop Yep, says you can hear me. Um, adding NPCs that can walk around and things means we have to have humanoids that are rigged for animation. We have to have animation trees. That's all doable. Uh, vehicle physics, bullet physics, gun physics, pickups, health. All doable. Navigation for AIs. That's the thing we'd have to solve. Um, currently, using the navigation on a grid map at procedure generation level doesn't seem to work. What we've found is it will work on whatever was in the scene before you ran the proc gen. So if you have a basic layout, that's the navigation it'll follow no matter what the tiles do afterwards. And I don't think that's being updated. Um, wouldn't even have NPCs walking around. Yeah, I mean, it's totally doable. It's totally doable. It's it's more, what's the scope of your game? To be honest, with the skills that we want to share with these courses, there's no reason you couldn't do that. I mean, just take the basic stuff we did in Food Fight in the course I did with Game Dev TV. Um, that's got basic projectiles and animation trees and all the rest of it. And you could make a multiplayer, shooty, drivey game um, with very little problem. Um, scope creep, but it's totally doable. Uh, uh, uh. It's videos on the Godot Facebook group. Yep. Hearing is slowly coming back. Uh, I mean, I would love to share my, my music with you, but I can't. Um, yeah, no, totally. I mean, it's it's something you could totally do on your own. Uh, I'm going to look at Mikey's car body. Nee, no, nee, no. Uh, fun fact, he only made half of this, and the wheels aren't included, but um, you don't see that in the game. <laughs> when I say half of it, it's duplicated down the center. Duplicated? Mirrored? I don't know the word. Anyway, I feel like this is a good time to uh, stop. I didn't share my screen again. Professional. Um, as I said, here's my thing. No, see, picture in picture is not working again. Scene working? No, OBS is broken. Whatever. OBS is broken. This feels like a good time to call it. It's coming up midnight. It's gone midnight. Wonderful God of people, you are wonderful. If you're watching this live, I really appreciate it. If you're watching it later, I really appreciate that too. <coughs> I'm tired, I'm thirsty, I want to speak to my wife. Um, 
you're amazing. Uh, can't wait to get this content to you and see you real soon. Bye. Where's my button? I lost my button. Found it. Bye.